in the beginning. Oh, good morning in the beginning. Morning, everybody. Morning. How oh, are we still busy chewing and chewing? Morning. And good morning. Okay, come back here to the table now so we can begin the commentary. Okay, everybody, good morning. Today is Wednesday, March 27. Uh, let me see. The gospel today is from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. Hello, Erwin. Good morning. Uncle Erwin. So huh? Yeah. Yeah. So today, let me see. Today, what does the gospel tell us? Today, Jesus says, Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You see, Jesus, when he came, the, the Jews, the Pharisees, the scribes particularly, were accusing him of changing things. Right? Hey, Eva wants to participate. Uh, Everybody was accusing Jesus of uh, changing things around, of not respecting the traditions of the Jews, of uh, asserting himself and, 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 uh, and saying that he was um, going to implement or impose a new way of life on people. Well, maybe to a certain extent, you can say that, that there's some truth to that, but uh, it's actually more of a misunderstanding of the reality. Okay, because what Jesus came on earth for was to actually fulfill the law and the prophets, as he, as he said, right? I, amen, I say to you, I did not come, okay, uh, I, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Because Jesus was the fulfillment of what all of the prophets all of the kings, all of the judges prior to his coming have talked about in the Old Testament. Okay? Everybody, all the prophets and kings and judges and everybody that uh, came before Jesus were all talking about Jesus. They were all preparing for the coming of Jesus. Right? So, <laughs> Ava is agreeing. So, uh, when Jesus came, he was the fulfillment. Okay? He was the fulfillment of all of what the law and the prophet have talked about prior to his coming. So Jesus was saying, no, I did not come to abolish the law. I did not come to destroy your traditions. In fact, I have come to fulfill them. Except that, okay, except that I am here to clarify all of your misunderstandings about the law and the prophets. Because, because Jesus is the revelation of, is the fulfillment and the revelation of everything that the law and the prophets have been talking about. Okay? Jesus is now the incarnate word. Jesus is the word before he was just word. Now he was made flesh. Okay? He is now the embodiment of what the laws and the prophets have been talking about in the Old Testament. But since the Jews did not understand very much about what was being revealed to them, eh, they didn't understand very much. So when Jesus came and he was trying to clarify for them all of those teachings that they heard before, all of the things that they have uh, uh, been reading in the scriptures before his coming, then they, they, they thought, well, you're changing things around. Eh? You're changing things around. Well, no, that is not true. I'm not, Jesus was not changing things around. He was actually explaining to them the many things that they misunderstood. Eh? The many things they misunderstood about the revelation to them. So Jesus is the clarification of all of that. Jesus came to clarify, to enlighten them, to explain to them 
what the laws and the prophets were all about. For example, for example, the Jews uh, thought, well, you know, uh, an eye for an eye. They had a law like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? If, uh, if a brother offends you, well, you have the right to uh, retaliate. Well, Jesus said, no, 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 that's not, that is not what it was all about, okay? That's not what it's all about. You actually have to love your enemies. You actually have to love your enemies, okay? Is that something new? No, that's not something new. That was actually embodied already in the Ten Commandments, okay? That was what was in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not uh, uh, covet thy neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, right? Mia, you're memorizing the Ten Commandments, right? Uh, uh, honor your father and mother and all of that. But, well, uh, the, the new so-called new things that Jesus was saying, love your enemies, etc., etc., they're all there in the, in the laws of the Old Testament. They're all, they're all there in the Ten Commandments, except that the Jews did not really understand very much about how to put them into practice. So they ended up interpreting the Ten Commandments and the prophets in their own way. And since they were only using human reason to do that, well, human reason was subject to mistakes. Human reason was, was uh, infallible. Or fallible, rather. Okay, You can make mistakes. So Jesus came to clarify those things. Jesus was there to make sure that we understood things the right way. Okay? And he says, so I did not come to abolish the law. I came, in, uh, I came actually to fulfill them. So, therefore, <laughs> yes, Ava. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments... And teaches others to break them. Now, ah, you're going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven. That is assuming you even get there. Right? For teaching people the wrong thing. Okay? So, let us not uh, uh, break. Let us not uh, break the law. Let us be very faithful. Our Lord is encouraging us to be very faithful to all of His teachings. And by the way, what does the catechism say now about... The teachings of the church how do we know that we are practicing what is true we are believing what is true one of you were just telling me about that right Chevelle you were t talking about the bishops what were the bishops all about who are the bishops now the next question <laughs> the next question of the catechism <laughs> huh? to whom did Jesus pass on <clears throat> Louder. Can you tell us? Can you tell us to whom did? Come on, <laughs> come on, Shabby. Don't be a sh don't be shy. Okay, Shabelle was just memorizing that the other day. To whom did Jesus give the power to teach, to teach, sanctify, and rule the people? Well. The answer is Jesus Christ gave power to teach and sanctify to rule the members of his church as the apostle, the first bishop of the church. Okay, so he gave the power to rule, to teach to the bishops who were the first oh, sorry, to the apostles who were the first bishops of the church. See? Very good, Javi. See? So now uh, our Lord encourages us to be faithful to uh, to the church to be faithful to the teachings that he has left us through through the church right and and in the church we have what we call the magisterium the magisterium is the teaching authority of the church the authority precisely that was passed on by jesus to the apostles and from the apostles to the bishops for the bishops now our bishops uh, to be teaching us the very same things that jesus was teaching his apostles which is what the fulfillment of the law and the prophets so what does our lord encourage us to do here our lord encourages us to be faithful to the church to be faithful to the magisterium of the church to be well, how do we be how do we become faithful number one we have to know it right number one we have to know the teachings of the church 
We have to know what the church is teaching us. We have to know what Jesus Christ is teaching us through the teaching authority of the church, which is the magisterium, which is our bishops, our priests. Okay? They are the ones that were given the, the sacred duty of passing on to us the teachings of the church, the teachings of Jesus Christ. Okay, And uh, where do we find all of that? Where do we find all of that? The catechism, precisely. That is the that is the uh, the compressed version, right, of all of the teachings of the church. You find them right there. That's what the catechism is all about. That is why, you know, folks, uh, we have a practice here at home. My own kids, we memorize the catechism points every day. Every day, it's part of our routine. That's how we get to a to know the teachings of the church more and more. You just witness how Chavel, my seven-year-old, okay, has memorized uh, uh, um, uh, plenty of these points already because we do it every day. What our practice here at home is we memorize one point of the catechism per day. One, just one. And if you do that with your own children, make them memorize one point of the catechism every day, in in uh, in a in a two year period, they would have memorized uh, volume one and two of uh, that thick uh, catechism book. Okay, so some of my older kids have gone already twice or thrice uh, on that round of uh, memorizing uh, of the catechism. So if you do that with your own children, one point a day, you would have done very good in teaching them. Uh, about the catechism okay so anyway uh, we're all being encouraged to be faithful be faithful with what the church teaches us but first we have to learn it and the best way to learn it start with the catechism okay? start with the catechism it's all there and then maybe you and your children can listen together to these broadcasts every morning maybe you'll learn a little bit more right <laughs> okay because this is the way I'm teaching my own children Okay. This is the way I'm teaching my own children to understand the message of the gospel. And, and, and we do this uh, almost every day, if not every day, as long as we could uh, uh, manage to. So we parents are obligated to be the first teachers of our own children. We are the teachers of our own children about the, uh, the, the truths of the faith. Okay? Don't, don't be lazy about this. Don't just relegate that duty to the PSR in in parishes, the parish school of religion, and let those other people teach your children. No, 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 no. That's not good parenting, okay? That is a very, very bad parenting practice. And those of you who are listening here, you know, those of you who belong to uh, parish administrations, you better change that. You better change that. Stop being surrogate parents. What you have to really do is teach the parents how to teach their own children. That's what we have to do. Not take over the role of parents and teach the, uh, the kids their, their catechism. In the first place, many of <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but many of, many of the PSR people are doing a bad job. And how do I know that? Well, just talk to the students. They know nothing when they come out of your classes. So let the parents do the job of teaching uh, their children about the truths of the faith. And then let them give good examples. So... Uh, parishes should not be surrogate parents when it comes to this matter. Let them teach the parents how to teach their own children. Okay, now, but uh, how do we become faithful to the teachings of the church? Especially the big commandments, especially the big difficult things that, that uh, or are seemingly difficult uh, to follow. Okay? How do we follow, for example, there you hear plenty of Catholics nowadays who say, Oh, you know, Sunday Mass. Yeah, that's what commandment is a Sunday Mass? Three, three, huh? three. The third commandment, which is? Honor the, Sabbath day. Honor the Sabbath day. But you know what some Catholics would say? Uh, you know, I went to Mass already last Sunday. Maybe I can skip it this time. Or, uh, you know, maybe Sunday is not really the most important day. Let's try Friday. Because it's more convenient. And Sunday I want to relax because there's Super Bowl or whatever it is there is on TV, right? Or I want to go camping and when I'm camping I can't go to Mass. 
wrong, wrong, wrong. We cannot dilute the teachings of the church out of convenience. Okay? Or some people say, well, you know, uh, marriage, nah, marriage is a piece of paper. So maybe let's just skip marriage and let's just live together. And... Or, uh, oh, oh, you know, uh, uh, openness to life. Well, you know, maybe sometimes I can engage in some contraceptive uh, practices and... Uh, Okay, these are all watering down of the teachings of the church. Okay, so we cannot do this. We have to be faithful Catholics. We have to be faithful to everything that the church teaches. Now, what is an easy way to be faithful to the big things? Be faithful to the little things, Joseph. Very good, right? Those who cannot be faithful to the small things cannot be faithful with the big things. So let us be faithful to the big things. Oh, hello, Fernando, all the way from uh, Spain is listening to us. Okay? So uh, let us be faithful to the small things. So for example, for example, talking about the third commandment, talking about going to Mass on Sunday, okay? We cannot be faithful to go to Mass on Sunday if we cannot even say some prayers during the week. If we can't even be faithful with, uh, with, uh, with saying some prayers during the week, how can we do the big prayer of Sunday Mass? We cannot. Right? If we cannot even be modest, for example, in, our, in the manner of dress, in the manner of conducting ourselves in public, well, how can we be faithful with marriage? How can we be faithful with uh, uh, um, things related to procreation? We cannot. See? So, the key to being faithful to the big teachings of the church, following the commandments properly, is to be faithful in doing the little things. To be faithful in doing the very little things of everyday life. That is how we are going to uh, facilitate our obedience to the big laws, to the Ten Commandments, and to the other things that the church is teaching us. Okay. I guess we went over time already. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> so, bye-bye, everybody. See you next time. Have a good day. And those of you, again, I'd like to invite those of you who can make it to the abortion clinic, let's go there and pray for the end of abortion within these 40 days of life. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you there this morning. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Have a good day.